Just bounce to this. Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Brandon Clements and welcome back to another tutorial from Glass Hand. Today we're going to take a look at how to do some skin shading inside of Octane. I've had some questions about it and I think it's an awesome co topic to cover. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and check out how we can do some skin shading. So this scene here is uh, from Infinite Realities. If you actually go to your content browser and you go into your presets, let's see, I think it's under Studio. Um, and then you go to, let's see, nope, it's not in the character scenes, it is in the render examples. Okay, so then you go into scenes, and if you keep going down, you have this, uh, you have this guy right here. So the infinite reality scene, uh, basically what I've done is just kind of uh, brought this into uh, a new scene, copied it all over, um, set up new octane lights, and started building out the skin shader. So, um, it's not quite exactly how um, the C4D materials are, meaning you can't just go up to the plugins and then go to convert materials. Uh, there's some things that happen that's kind of that's kind of weird. Um, so I just went ahead and just started to set it up from uh, the start. If you're going to follow along, I suggest you do the same. Uh, what you'll need is the maps from it, of course, because that's what gives it the realistic look. So if we go down to um, this render here, you can see this is the result of the scene um, with the shaders applied to it. And you get some uh, pretty good subsurface scattering here along the ears and uh, everything looks real. And it's, um, I feel like it's not too overdone. Uh, I know there's a lot of skin shaders out there that just kind of go, uh, you know, too far. And then this, this you know, the effect kind of looks uh, fake. <laughs> it just looks too evident. Um, so I tried to find a balance between the two and also it's pretty versatile in the setup that you can um, play to it how you like. So I guess the first thing that we can talk about is setting up just a generic uh, sub subsurface scattering material here. Um, and we'll go through, we'll walk through each of the channels here. So for the roughness, I went ahead and used the uh, specular base and tweaked the mix shader so that uh, 0.5 and 0.3 were driving the grayscale values here in this black and white image. Okay, so um, that's been roped down so that the roughness of the skin isn't too diffuse and isn't too uh, shiny. So it's kind of a you know a mix of where where you'd want it to be, um, not looking too sweaty and not looking too diffuse. Okay, so. You can adjust these on the fly. If you wanted to rope them down further to black, they'll get shinier, and as you rope them up, up higher, um, depending on what span of numbers you put them to, uh, you can tweak it out, and it's pretty fun to mess around with that. Um, as for the reflection, uh, I actually don't have it mixing into this material, so you can just basically delete this slot, just to leave it um, as a float in, you know, by default that is just reflecting okay so um, you, you don't we don't even need to talk about these two um, channels because they don't come into play uh, if you go down to the index I have the index at 1.6 um, you could probably do 1.8 and it would look just fine too um, but basically just setting it up to be kind of a plasticky uh, type of uh, index of refraction so transmission I just have a uh, a color here that I picked out so if you wanted to um, copy these values here. Uh, it's just kind of a uh, a I, I can't remember what the what the term for it is. Um, subcutaneous, I believe, <laughs> color. Uh, basically, like underneath the skin color. Um, I think that's the correct term. And if you go into the scattering medium, and on the on the actual medium channel, you go to scattering. I have the the inversion of this color map here so the invert is actually taking um, the opposite of the color so that's kind of how it works in the medium channel uh, for instance if we look at the absorption this will be a lot easier to explain uh, you want to have the complement or the inverse of this red color that is also seen in the transmission slot um, and then that's what will actually come through in the subsurface scattering uh, it's it kind of hard to explain and kind of weird, but if you understand that, um, just to put the invert of whatever color goes into the absorption and scattering slots, then you should get uh, the result that you expect. And the scale, I, I left it around 20. I thought that was pretty good. You can probably rope it down maybe to 15. 
if you wanted to. It just depends on the scene, your character, the model. Um, all that stuff comes into play. Uh, fake shadows, I do not have it on. I left it off. Uh, it is not invoked. So the next one that we're going to look at is the skin glossy. So we have a specular material, and then we have a glossy material, and they're being mixed. That's basically how this works. Um, so for diffuse, again, I just have some color correction here just to get the result in the final render that I wanted. So um, basically just took the saturation down a little bit. It looks like that was it. And then multiplied um, this overall skin tone across the image so it wasn't so red. Um, specular is by default. I just have that on. Uh, roughness, we have, again, the same kind of idea, 0.3 and zero so this is being pretty shiny overall on the skin you can see here in the preview um, and I want this to be more shiny because as you start to rope it off with the fall off you're kind of blending the two um, from the roughness of the, the SSS material in the skin so uh, it's really just kind of tweaking it to what you think looks good in the viewport in the octane uh, viewer and in the bump channel I have the same setup the same layered material um, I, I think this works fine for the bump just because it bakes it all down and uh, it works pretty good. Basically, Octane can bake this map onto the model, so the bump's working w well. Uh, the normal channel, I'm just using the uh, regular JPEG image that was from the normal. And displacement, uh, I just have one centimeter and um, level of detail is 1024 because that's how big the actual image is itself. Uh, 1.6 and I think that does it for the glossy so then you create a mix material once this loads up and I have the SSS in the first slot and the skin um, in the second slot okay and it's being blended between this fall off map and you can see I increase the normals just a little bit so um, basically that will give you the result of this guy here so looking pretty good one thing um, that I forgot to mention, and I, I'm not sure if it's my version of Cinema 4D or the way um, that the picture viewer handles the hair, but uh, he will have the hair if you render it inside of the live viewer. Okay, so um, I'm going to make sure that this is working with my other GPUs, and they are working with the other computers on the network, and I'm going to go ahead and send this to Octane. And I'll uncheck the, the lock ratio button. Um, but here in the actual live viewer, you can see that the hair shows up for his eyelashes. And um, we can talk about that real quick uh, before I move on to the other scene file. Um, the way that I got this to work, uh, we'll just hide that for a second. Um, the lashes, you know, these are still the, the hair objects um, from Cinema 4D. And these are the guides. So everything here is pretty much uh, you know normal how you would think of you just draw the splines you put it in here to the link slot and then the eyelashes the count and the length are being controlled here um, this the default cinema 4d hair material is only controlling the thickness and the clump so that's the only two attributes that are being controlled here okay the thickness and the clump everything else is being shaded with the octane material okay so everything from the, the color, the diffuse, um, you know, the index, all that stuff is being controlled by these texture tags here with the Octane shader. Okay. Um, and another thing to note is you need to have the hair render before the Octane render. Okay. So if you have that set up, uh, that should work fine. Um, but for my purposes, it was only showing up in the actual uh, live viewer. So you could basically let this go to 100%, uh, pause it, and then save it out in any format that you want. Okay, so not a big deal there. And for animations, I never really use the picture viewer. I've had some problems with the picture viewer before uh, using Octane. So I usually just send it to the render queue and um, let it do its thing that way. I think that's a good way to communicate with Octane and Cinema 4D. Um, so I'm not sure if that works out. I, I may have to do some tests and get back to you guys in the comment sections, but uh, that's how I would handle it. And then the, basically I just have a backdrop and the backdrop just has a C4D gradient shader on it just to kind of um, 
give a little bit more of a vignette. Okay, so thanks to Infinite Realities, I was able to test the skin shader out on this model and it works really well. Um, I think the most important thing about shading for skin is actually having great texture maps, having the micro detail built into the maps, um, you know, for the roughness, for the bump, and for the normal, and also the displacement. All those things are very, very important um, to creating a realistic skin shady, shader. And the model is extremely accurate. Um, I believe it's a scan. I, I could be wrong. And the way the model is built, it's really good. So I had good input just going straight in to shade. Um, but you know, this isn't always the case for every single character that you may have. So I'm going to show you another case. Um, this rig character here, which is in the content library. Um, if you go to the browser, and then I believe if you go into, let's see. If you go into studio, uh, maybe 3D objects. There we go, humans. Uh, that's where you'll find this rig male character. Um, this is kind of a more dramatic lighting setup. Uh, you can tell that the skin is way more glossy and um, everything's looking pretty good. You kind of got this nice kind of depth of field effect. Um, so this skin shader was um, pretty much the same as the other one, but I want to show you something else to kind of get this subsurface scattering to be a little more evident there for the ears. Okay, so it depends on how the model is actually created. Um, to actually get the kind of uh, subsurface result that you want. And you can see that the thickness here on the ear is different from the model over here from Infinite Reality. So if we look at um, the way that geometries are, are created. So um, the ear here is a lot thinner and allows for the light to penetrate and escape um, easier than the character over here. And that's just limitations maybe for production reasons. Um, you know, you can't really put as much information that you would like into this model, whatever it may be. Um, but no worries uh, if we turn off the actual... Yeah, you can see it's a, it's a lot lower res. Uh, but there's um, no problem there because we can get around it with shading. Uh, we can use a lot of different shading techniques to do that. One of the things that's different in this example is um, it's a little bit different because instead of using the fall off map uh, I created just a simple texture here inside of Photoshop so let me actually navigate to that so we can see it a little bit easier so uh, I'm gonna go in my browser here go to the textures and um, let's see if we can find this real quick so scenes skin shading let's go to this rig mail file that I have I have all my textures here in one uh, place. It is the SSS. Um, okay, so it's just basically uh, excluding most features of this model except for the ears. You can see that the white um, is allowing for the SSS effect to come through. Of course, you can go ahead and um, take this map into Photoshop and use a lot of different masks to uh, play around with what works best for you. Um, this was something that gave me a decent result, so I went ahead and ran with it. Uh, I would probably do a little bit more here for the lips and the eyes, but um, just for the time's sake, uh, it was working for the example that I was going for, okay? So, um, using a texture map in this slot to be able to drive the mixture of these two materials, I think works best, but if you can get away with the first result using the falloff map and the falloff shader, then that's great. Uh, but for most of your cases, I would say you'd probably want to go ahead and paint a map and it doesn't take that long to do. So I'm using three lights here in the scene. Um, and they are from HDR labs. You can see if you go to the octane material, um, you go to the emission and you were using this, uh, softbox texture to be able to light the scene. Um, and also for the Octane Sky, I'm using an HDR image, one of Maxime's um, HDRs, the Canada Montreal uh, Planetarium White is what I'm using for the scene, and it's being turned down uh, extremely low. Um, the reason being, I just want to be able to fill some of these harsher, darker uh, spots on the model, okay? Um, and that's providing 
some complex lighting information that I couldn't get anywhere else except for an HDR image. Um, on the camera, I have been messing around with some of these uh, response curves, and I found that the uh, this preset here, the underscore five, is pretty cool. I would I would go ahead and try out all of these one through six. They're really fun. Uh, to mess around and get different looks out of. Um, of course, there's all of these here. But um, those those have been the really nice, kind of less dramatic ones. And it kind of gives a uh, different coloration to some of the shadows and highlights of the image. So um, I also used uh, the same preset here. And it just softened up and gave some more color information into the highlights and shadows. And I uh, was liking that a lot. Uh, remember, the skin shading is basically going to change from character to character, so it's good to have a good starting spot, um, like the one I showed you in the first scene. And then if you need to, you can create maps to allow the lights to go in and out of your surfaces on your models. Um, adjusting the scale of the scattering medium is going to be huge, um, depending on the size of the scene, um, the size of your models, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and upload a scene file on Gumroad for 99 cents. You can get the mixed material and the uh, specular and glossy materials if you don't feel comfortable doing them yourself. Or if I skipped over anything and you wanted to go ahead and check some of the parameters out yourself, that'd be great. Um, but I'm not going to include the scene files um, just because they were created by other artists and I don't want to put a price tag, even if it is small on someone else's work that I do not have permission from. So you can find all those in the content browser, um, but then you can go ahead and apply the materials that I have. Um, but I, I know that you're probably checking out this tutorial so that you can do it for your own character. So I hope that gives you a head start and a little bit more understanding in creating your, your shaders for your characters. Also check out the subsurface scattering tutorial I did for the candle. Uh, around Halloween in this past year, but that will do it for this skin shading tutorial if you have any more Ideas that you'd like to see for tutorials leave them in the comments below. I have an X particles tutorial that I'm gonna start um, Talking about here soon that should be pretty fun um, and have some interesting techniques for you guys. So uh, With octane 3 we'll probably get into some turbulence FD stuff as well So thanks a lot for checking this out, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot